Okay. Yes, we can start the class with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have blessed each one of us. Thank you that this time, Lord, that you have set where we can study on your word, on your identity, that we have been made righteous, we have been justified, and we are sanctified in you, Lord. Father, we pray that as we study this truth, we pray that you will help us to embrace this truth into us, Lord, into our daily life, oh, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So last class, what did we study on? What did we study on? Justification. Last before class, what did we study on? What did we cover? Someone on online, I'm waiting for your comments as well on the chat. Yes, so what did we cover? Did we study on the righteousness of God? Then last week we studied on, last class we studied on being justified, just as if we are not sinned. So in today's session, we are on page 46, section 4. We're going to study on sanctification. What does sanctification mean? set apart we have been sanctified we have been set apart we have been made holy in christ so we can we turn to 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 1 corinthians can we turn from our bible 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 <coughs> where apostle paul tells us that not only that Jesus Christ is the wisdom and righteousness of God, but he is also our sanctification. He is also our sanctification. So we read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption so christ so we in christ or christ has become the wisdom for us from god and the righteousness sanctification and redemption so sanctified means set apart being made holy so we see some of the greek words that translates sanctification and holiness is the word, adjective word called hagios means holy, sacred, consecrated, where one has been dedicated or separated from sin or set apart. So it has to do with something more than an outward expression, that is, something that is within the change, the transformation that needs to take place within an individual. There's another word called hagiozo. It's a verb which means to make holy, to sanctify, to consecrate. Yes, it signifies from that we have been set apart for God, to make a person or think opposite of being common or unclean. We also see another word, hagio, which is translated as saints. The coming verse we will study how the set apart or sanctified means it's also equal to a word saints, sanctified one, which means the holy one. So here we are going to study in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So we also see the in Ephesians chapter 1, 14, where it says, God chose us in him before the foundation of the world. For what? 
that we should be holy we should be blameless before him so we see there's a lot of importance for the word sanctification so in the last class we studied about justification last before we studied about the righteousness what does righteousness mean righteousness means we have a right standing with god where there is no condemnation no judgment and then we saw justification we have been justified as if we are not sinned why because christ took our place on the cross jesus died on the cross and he gave his righteousness upon us we have been justified in christ just as if we have not sinned so god who is a righteous god god who is a holy god and only through him we have been made righteous only through him we have been justified and only through him we have been sanctified so today we are studying about sanctification that means we have been set apart for the master's use we are the vessel of honor can i request you all to just put your hand on yourself and declare this over yourself that i am sanctified in christ and i am that vessel of honor who's been set apart for master's use in jesus name amen so god determined beforehand that we are as holy people we are called for himself we have been set apart for himself it is not by choice we are here but god has sent us he has set us apart for his use and yes this is the process that you have set yourself aside to prepare yourself for the greater call that god has called you so god has brought us into christ and made us righteous made us sanctified be justified in the work that jesus did on the cross so we have been sanctified in Christ we also read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 page 47 <coughs> sorry in our notes to the church of god which is at corinth to those who are sanctified in christ jesus called to be saints we see paul addressing the people at corinth that you have been sanctified in Christ and you are called to be saints with all who is every place who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our lord both theirs and our so your paul is addressing the people they are not perfect they didn't become a heavenly being they are still normal they are still like us human but then look at the declaration that paul is declaring over the church of corinth over the people who are in corinth he's calling them you have been sanctified in christ and you are the saints of god the holy one so how did they become holy by having the nature of god in them by having the christ likeness in them so they have been set apart and here he calls the one those uh, those uh, the people who have received jesus as a lord and savior the people of god who have set themselves apart for the master's use who lead their life with the god conscious which where their life is a pleasing to god and here you see paul addresses them as saints so it's not paul is just not addressing the people of the corinthian church but today paul is addressing you and me that as we are set ourselves apart for the master's use we are the saints of god we have been sanctified we have been made holy and we have been set apart for his use so here paul is addressing that we are saints of god regardless of our background 
regardless of the weaknesses that we are enduring or uh, working on. But one thing we need to know that we are in the process, process to become more like Christ. We are working on ourselves. Sanctification is a process that does not happen immediately, done. No, it is a process. We are becoming more like Christ in our nature, in our attitude, in all the way of our life that we lead. We are trying to be sanctified, be more holy, be more like Jesus in our life. So God completes the work and then He invites us to live out of what is called the God nature or the Christ nature. Most of us, we were not perfect when we had that encounter or the call of God. But God meets us at the place where we are. And then He calls us out from the darkness to light. And it is a process that we need to put an effort to be more like Jesus. We need to lead our life pleasing to God. That's what Paul says, your old nature has gone and you've become a new creation in Christ. So we turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, where it says, I am holy in Christ. Therefore, I keep all sin away from my spirit, soul, and body. So what is it? The scripture reads it this way. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So what is main ingredient here? The fear of God. When we have this fear of God, we can cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of this flesh, of this world, and be more pleasing to God. We also see in the other scriptures like the Gospel of John or in the book of Ro in the letter to Romans or in First Peter, we see that time and again we have been addressed saying that I am holy in Christ. It's not that I'm holy by myself, but then we have been made holy in Christ. We have been purified. Our mind needs to be renewed to believe this. How our mind can be renewed? By reading the word of God, by embracing the truth that we can renew our mind so that we can obey the truth, we can take this truth and apply it over ourselves and claim it, speak it out over ourselves, so that we can embrace and know that we have been purified in Christ Jesus and we have been made holy. And we are called the saints of God. We are the saints of God. This is how Paul addresses uh, the people in Corinth or people in Ephesians or people in Philippians. This is how he addresses the uh, the people of God as he addresses them this way. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, he addresses them that you have been sanctified in Christ and so you are called to be the saints. And again, we see that in the letter to Romans chapter 1, verse 7, he writes to the Romans, Beloved of God, called to be the saints. Again, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, we see, I'm Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And he's saying, to the saints who are in Ephesus, the faithful one in Jesus Christ. See how he's addressing saints. Y'all have been set apart. You have been sanctified. You have been purified. 
So what happens is, it's not that we are perfect, that Paul is addressing the people or us, that you have been pure, you are um, you're, uh, sanctified. No, it is a process. He knows that it is a process. But then the minute we call ourselves and we claim ourselves that we have been saints, we are set apart, we have been made holy, we see ourselves moving from the worldly nature to the nature of God. What happens to our mind is consciously we are putting on an effort on our mind saying that, hey, these things does not please God. So I am a child of God. I'm being set apart. That which was normal for me to do before is what now I'm consciously putting an effort not to do the things that displeases God. Or we are putting a conscious effort saying, I'm I'm a saint of the Most High God. I've been set apart. I've been sanctified in Christ. So let me do the things that pleases God. So what happens? We consciously make an effort to change our nature, adapt to the nature of God. We check on ourselves. Is a way of life pleasing God from our thoughts, our words, our actions. We check on ourselves does these things match with the attribute of God, with the nature of God? And then we try to correct ourselves. So, what's happening here? There's a process. We are trying to renew our mind and our heart, and we're trying to get our thoughts, words, and action aligned to what God is calling us, you and me, to be. We're going to tell ourselves, hey, listen, we are set apart. We are sanctified. We are purified. We have been called as saints. We are the people of God. We are the child of God. So how a child of God need to represent ourselves? So these thoughts start, you know, we start meditating on these thoughts. And these thoughts helps us to develop our character helps us to develop a God nature in us. So it's help, it is helping us to lead our life that is pleasing God. So we, as a believer, start believing in ourselves that God is set apart. And we are the child of God. We are the saints of God. We have been sanctified. The minute you start believing on yourself, what God is telling about you and me, you see, the way we lead our life starts changing. The way we handle ourselves starts changing. The way we address others starts changing. Because we look the other person also as a child of God, as a minister of God, as a saint of God. Now, the minute we see ourselves and others, you see there is a change in a life there's a change in the way we address each other so in second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 we read it as who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which is given to us in christ jesus before time began so what do we see here? There is a call, there is a purpose. There is a call and there is a purpose. We also see God's grace been extended over us. So this was a part of God's plan, even before the foundation of the earth, that there is a call over us, and there is a purpose. And that's the reason God has set us apart for his use and we have been sanctified in Him. So we are just not set apart or sanctified, but we are the temple of the Holy God. We are the temple of the Most High God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is what the scripture says. Let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. It says, In whom the whole building being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom 
you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in spirit. So what do we see? We're just not holy or been made righteous or sanctified, but we are the dwelling place of the Most High God. We are the body of Christ. So when we say the body of Christ or the temple of the Most High God, the scripture does not talk about a physical building, but it's talking about you and me. It's talking about the people of God as the temple, as the body or as the building of Christ, as a dwelling place of God. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, we see that, do you not know Paul is writing to the people of Corinth, saying that, do you not know that you are the temple of the Most High God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. So if anyone believes or anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. So which temple are you? Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, the people in Corinth, and asking, do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? So when we say we have been sanctified, we need to purify ourselves. When? It is a process. We have to constantly put an effort to sanctify ourselves. Why? Because we are the temple of the Most High God. And Paul writes here, because we are the temple of the Most High God, and the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God is indwelling with us, we need to keep this temple holy. How do we keep this temple holy? That is our body. How do we keep ourselves holy? We need to put away the things that displeases God. We cannot do the things that would destroy our mind, body, and soul. That's what the Paul is addressing here. Because you are the temple of the Holy God, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. So be very careful. Keep yourself holy from our thoughts, words, action. We need to sanctify, keep ourselves pure. Why? Because we are the temple of the Most High God. The minute we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, the Spirit of the Lord indwells with us. That's what we read in John chapter 14 or 16, 14. We see that the Holy Spirit who abides in you, lives in you forever. So He abides in you. The Holy Spirit who abides in us, lives in us forever. So we are the temple of the Most High God, where the Spirit of God abides in us. And we need to keep this temple holy, sanctified, purified. So in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 14, it says, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are been sanctified. But through one offering, that is, by Jesus dying on the cross, by Jesus offering himself on the cross, we have been made perfect in him. We have been sanctified in him. We see in Colossians chapter 1, verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So in the body of his flesh, as in the body of Christ's death, we have been presented as holy. We have been made blameless in Christ Jesus. How? By faith in Christ, we have been sanctified and we have been purified and we have entered this new covenant by the blood of Jesus Christ and now we are the people who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus. So what is sanctification? It is a completed work in the spirit and in a present and it is a continuous process in our daily life. So we have been sanctified in the completed work of Jesus he did on the cross. Only by the, by the death 
of Jesus on the cross. We have been sanctified, we have been made holy, and we have been set apart. So God's nature is expressed in and through us when we have the Spirit of the living God living in us. So we have been sanctified by the Word and by His Spirit in us. So because having this mind of Christ or having been consciously knowing that we have been um, we have been made righteous, we have been justified, and we have been sanctified. We need to lead our life that way, knowing that we are the vessel of honor, because the spirit of the living God, the spirit of God is indwelling with within us. So, what happens in our daily practical life? We set ourselves apart unto God. So we must learn it is a process. It is a process that we cleanse our mind, cleanse ourselves in our words, deed, and action, and lead our life that pleases God. And uh, yeah, we do not violate uh, certain things that would displease God. So there are certain things that we need to keep in mind. So we need to, uh, certain things that we need to keep in mind as we live this set apart life, as we live this sanctified life. So what are those things? We need, the first thing here we have made a note is, in our notes, we are on page 53, walk in love. Talks about how important it is for us to walk in love and walk in holiness. We cannot walk in holiness if we do not walk in love. That's what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. It says, And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you so that we may establish our hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So here he's asking us, we need to seek God. We need to, we cannot walk in holiness and not in love. So we need to, it is both. We need to walk in love, walk in holiness. Why? Because God is love and God is holy at the same time. So love and holiness are the attributes of God, are the nature of God that we need to walk and abide in that nature. So love does not enjoy sin. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, what is love? Talks about the attributes of love. And it ends with love does not enjoy sin, but love enjoys holiness. Next we see, we, we have been sanctified. There are standards and values at Christ that we need to follow when we are sanctified. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Very important. So these are the standards and values that we need to follow when we are sanctified in God. So it is a, a daily manner, like how we live our life that would be holy and pleasing to God. And these should be our non-negotiables. We cannot negotiate on these values because we reflect Christ in our daily life when we have these nature and attribute in us. The next point we see here is a sanctified life revealing his virtue. A sanctified life 
living is virtue. So 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 we see that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own pe special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So what do we see here? We see that in Christ, we are the chosen generation, the royal priest, and the holy people, and we are the special ones unto God. That is what it is here, that we have been sanctified in Christ, and we have certain virtues and excellencies of our God that is revealed in and through us. Next we see that we are the sanctified vessels in Christ. We are the sanctified vessels in Christ. We see that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, when we read through 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. Now, what is the seal? It says, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity means depart from sin. Depart, depart from the nature of flesh. Depart from the worldliness. Now verse 20 it says, But in a great house they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So we need to be that holy vessel, vessel which will be used for the purpose of honoring God. Now all that is in our hand. All that is in our hand. Are we leading our life that is pleasing God? We need to check. If we call ourselves that yes, we have been uh, we have been made righteous, we have been justified, we have been sanctified, we are the saints of God, we have been set apart. Check our life, check our daily being, check our thoughts, our words, action. Is it pleasing God? And then we need to work towards it, where we become more like God. It is a process. It is not one day till we meet Christ in glory, we need to work on ourselves. The next point here we see is persecuted and ridiculed for being sanctified. It's not easy. The world, the world may not accept you. You may come across certain persecution, certain rejection, but then you need to go beyond that. People never accepted Jesus. Even Jesus was persecuted. Even his apostles and disciples had to go through the hardship. They had to need to endure the hardship. So when we are leading our life that is pleasing God, we can endure and change ourselves and move ahead. John chapter 17, verse 13 to 19, we see that. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. But I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world, but sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. 
And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, we see that, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All our disciples and apostles went through this hardship. And you and I also will go through the hardship and we lead a life that is set apart, not of the world, but of God. But then, God says that you are not alone. I am with you. He has given us the promise. He has promised us that He will never leave us nor forsake us. The grace is sufficient for the task that God has called each one of us. And so the next point we have received, we have been sanctified and preserved blameless. So we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we understand here? As we live out our life wholly to, unto God in our daily life, we will experience the holiness of God, the touch of God in our entire being, where our spirit, soul and body will be set apart completely to God. And even if you see our mind and our heart would desire would desire a yearn to lead our life pleasing God. None of us are bad. There is a God's nature in us which is good. So this nature of God that has been put in us will grow in us, will draw us close to God. So we have to grow in all things that is pertaining to Christ. It is a matter of growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ. So what do we learn from today's session? We learn that sanctification is a process by which we become more like Christ. We take on the mind of Christ, where the wisdom of God is formed within us. We see that the righteousness of God is imparted in us. We see <coughs> sanctification of Christ is imparted in us. So one day, when we meet Christ face to face, we see ourselves perfect in Him. So it is a process. Till that day, we need to lead our life that is pleasing to God. So in this wisdom, in the wisdom of God, even before the foundation of the earth, that God has planned for you and me to be set apart, to be sanctified, to lead our life that is pleasing to Him. So we can only fulfill this call and this purpose by we consciously putting on that effort, working over our life that pleases God. So God wants us to walk in that complete obedience to Him. What happens when we obey Him? There is a blessing. There is a reward that is waiting for us. There is a crown of life that God would like to put over us. So as we grow, in the sanctification. God gives us the power to live that life that pleases Christ, live that life that pleases God. So how? The Spirit of the Lord who is in us will teach us, will lead us to Christ, to be more like Him. As we see God, that's what the Word of God says, as you seek me, you will find me. So in our daily life, we need to see God, see God in every area. There is no time that we can say that we have overcome the situation or we are mastered uh, this particular area. No. As long as we are in this human flesh, we need the grace of God. We need His help. That's what the Word of God says, when you're weak, then you are strong. Why? Because we are more dependent on Christ so that His grace will be sufficient in us. 
So we need to believe this truth. In today's session, what we learn, we have been sanctified. We have been set apart. We are the saints of God. How? Through work that Jesus did on the cross. So we need to embrace this truth. Embrace it over ourselves and say, I am the saint of God. I am been sanctified, I am been purified, I have been made holy. So the enemy may bombard you, uh, yeah, with, he may remind you with a lot of negative thoughts. He may bring your weakness or even when you are uh, desiring to go to God and pray, he may tell you, hey, just before a few seconds back, you thought about all these wrong things or you spoke a word to a person which hurt him. He can remind you of all the negative things or your past hurt. But then you need to remember, nothing has power over you. Nothing has power over you. Those are the lies of the enemy. When you see God, He forgives you. That does not mean that He gives us the license to sin, but then the grace of God enables us to not to sin. He reminds us to walk away from sin. He tells us that the greater is He who is in you, who will strengthen you to overcome those areas of your weakness, areas of your addiction, areas that you want to overcome that displeases God. So when we seek Him, we will become more like Him. Why? Because we have been set apart, we have been sanctified by Jesus, that he, the work that he did on the cross. So with that, we will end the session today. Is there anyone in the class who would like to add or share something? Online class, you all can unmute and speak, or you can put your chat, or you can comment on the chat column. Anyone in the class here would like to add, share? Before we close our session. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for your son Jesus Christ who died on the cross for each of us. Thank you, Jesus, that you embrace the cross for each of us, Lord. Thank you that you have not given up on us. You have drawn us close to you. You have made us one with you. You have restored the relationship between us and the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have made us righteous in you. Thank you that we have been justified in you. And thank you, Lord, that today as we learned that we have been sanctified in you. We have been set apart for the Master's use. We are the saints of God. Thank you for revealing these truths to us, so that each of us in the class, that we may embrace to these truths and apply it over our life, that we may claim it over ourselves and walk a victorious life, Lord so that we may walk or we may lead our life that pleases you, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the new identity that you have given us, that we are the child of God, the child that pleases God in all the area of our life. Lord, we thank you that you are the most high God who indwells in us, O oh Father. Thank you that you have chosen each one of us as the temple of the most high God. Thank you, Lord, that you have sanctified us, you have purified us, you have made us holy, you have set us apart for the indwelling place for the most holy God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is indwelling in each one of us, Lord. Thank you that you are leading us and guiding us and teaching us in our everyday life, oh Father. Lord, we need you and we need more of you, Lord, to lead our life that pleases you, oh Father. In all our weaknesses, Lord, I pray that your grace will overpower, your grace will strengthen us, Lord. You will lead us, oh Father. 
thank you lord for doing it so you are the god who's faithful the god who called each one of us is faithful and thank you that you are leading us and guiding us and strengthening us in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so much for joining in today's session and god bless thank you i hope it was a blessing to each one Thank you and see you all in the next session. God bless. Bye.